Thank you for joining us on To Your Health with TGMC. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred, and on this episode, we will be dis- discussing COVID-19 or the coronavirus. Here tonight to educate us on coronavirus or COVID-19 is Sean Manny, a hospitalist at Terrebonne General Medical Center. Welcome to the show, Dr. Manny. Thank hey, you for being with us. Rhonda. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I know you've been very busy these last couple of weeks for sure, right? Yes, ma'am, yeah. Well, let's get started just telling about what you do and your role at Terrebonne General Medical Center. Okay. Uh, as you alluded to, I'm a, a hospital medicine doctor. And what that is, I know that's newer in the area. However, it, it's not a new um, specialty, but essentially we care for patients in the hospital during their acute phase of care. And um, we transition them back to their primary care doctors uh, once they're discharged home. We do not see patients in the clinic. Okay, so very vital role to the hospital for sure. Yes. Okay, well, you can't get away from it. Everybody's talking about it. It's, we're living and breathing it every day. So can Non-stop. you tell us, just get started by telling us what is coronavirus? So the coronavirus is, is a family of viruses. It is not a new entity that's, that's just emerged. However, the strain that we are seeing today is something known as the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Um, It causes a disease process known as coronavirus disease 19, or as we have come to call it, COVID-19. And who is affected primarily by this? Um, Really, we're we're learning more as as we get more information, um, which is being shared across the world better than it's ever been before. Mm -hmm. But it seems like everybody is at risk for catching the disease. However, the degree of severity um, is variable. It differs. The patients with at highest risk are the elderly, those with underlying conditions such as lung disease, heart disease, liver disease, kidney disease, um, smokers, and they're just more vulnerable to more severe forms of the disease process. Got it. So what are some of the symptoms? So symptoms, um, like most viruses, can be a little vague. However, we're seeing high fevers, cough, chills, shortness of breath, headaches and malaise. Okay, so somebody would know that they have it by those types of symptoms. They're similar to the flu. They're very similar to the flu and Mm -hmm. and it may be confused with the flu. However, that's these are symptoms to be aware of and to notify your primary care doctor or healthcare provider to help guide you if you have any concerns. Great. So I'm hearing there's um, most of the cases aren't as severe as others. Can you give us an idea of what the breakdown is on the severity of cases? Sure. Um, Like I said, as we get more information and we test more patients, we're starting to further delineate this. But it seems the majority of patients have very mild symptoms um, and can be managed at home. Um, Symptomatic care like we would as if we had the flu. However, there is a subsect of patients who progress to needing more acute care, uh, whether that be in the hosp- on the wards in the hospital or in the critical care unit. And that really depends on, on their comorbid states. Um, the symptoms to really be watching for there is severe shortness of breath. That would be the biggest marker of progression of disease. Okay, well that's a good point. So how can someone prevent this um, catching coronavirus? So that's a good question. I know it's all over the news and the media and social media. Um, but the biggest thing right now is really slowing the spread of the disease process, and that's, that's washing your hands frequently, especially after coughing, sneezing, blowing your nose into a Kleenex, wash your hands uh, 20 seconds with soap and water. Um, I've heard lots of people, you know, saying happy birthday to themselves twice. Or say the Hail Mary or Alpha yeah. Mother. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, cleaning high touch surfaces. Um, and if you're not feeling well, isolating yourself from others, mm-hmm. um, care for yourself. And if you're helping care for somebody that might be ill, who have very mild symptoms, again, just typical things that we would care for for a patient who, or a family member who had the flu. Wash your hands, don't share cups, don't share your meals with them, um, clean up after them, uh, wipe everything down. Right. So um, one of the hardest things I think is don't touch your face. I think that's one of the main things as well. It's hard, hard, very hard to do. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Okay. So, you know, we've all been social distancing right now. We're under a mandate by our governor to isolate ourselves inside our homes. So um, tell us a little bit about how that does help to flatten the curve. So that's a very good question. I've heard um, several news, uh, news 
stories about flattening the curve. And really what we're talking about there is there's a threshold of the hospital resources across the country that we have. There, that, is, that is a finite line that once we cross that with the burden of ill patients, we may not be able to provide adequate care for everybody if there's an onslaught of patients presenting to the hospital. So by isolating ourselves, we slow the progression of disease, protect the highest risk patients, and allow the healthcare workers to care for those who need it and have the resource to do it while we're, as you know, getting more resources from private entities, from the government. Um, so it's really about slowing the progression of the disease so that we can care for the highest need population in the best way possible. That certainly makes sense, and everybody needs to do their part, right? Correct. Um, the next thing that we need to discuss is what if you start to feel some symptoms or you, if you've come in contact with somebody with symptoms, what should a person do? Okay. That's a very good question. So um, the biggest thing would be to first immediately isolate yourself. Do not panic. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, there's still other viruses going around and other respiratory pathogens going around, and we should isolate ourselves. Notify your healthcare provider for further guidance. Um, do not go to work. Do not use public transportation. Do not use ride sharing. Mm -hmm. um, you really want to try to prevent infecting anybody else. Um, as far as care for yourself, symptomatic care, like we would typically would care for ourselves if we had the flu. If you have fever, it's okay to take some Tylenol. I know there's a lot of controversy about NSAIDs. Um, I would recommend patients talk to their primary care providers to further discuss that. I think we'll have more and information. what exactly are those? NSAIDs are ibuprofen, Aleve, okay, Goody's right. Powder, Motrin. Um, Pain relievers. Correct. Yep. There, there's, the there were some information that we should maybe be cautious with those medications. Mm -hmm. um, I know the FDA has, uh, the FDA and WHO have both released their statements on these medications, and that's ever evolving, so I would recommend just stay tuned and follow up with your primary care doctor. Good advice. What is TGMC doing to protect our community and to care for our community? So TGMC has been working very closely with private businesses and entities as well as the government um, trying to get available resources for healthcare providers. They've been instituting policies in the hospital to help care, uh, not only care for but protect patients and healthcare workers. Uh, one of the biggest ones, um, which I'm sure everybody's noticed now, is the limited visitations. As difficult as that may be, that's actually very important. Like we alluded to, isolation, protect those patients at high, highest risk. And that is, as of right now, those patients in the hospital who are ill. Right. Um, as of right now, there are no visitors allowed, aside from labor and delivery, which allow one visitor per patient. Right, we know it's hard. We're trying as best we can. Yes. It's for the patient and the public safety, Correct. our visitor safety as well. So I know we've seen some patients at TGMC and we've treated them. Tell us a little bit about the, those patients. So uh, as with the rest of the country, we're seeing a varied spectrum of disease. Mm -hmm. um, we've had patients with very mild symptoms who we've diagnosed, treated symptomatically and discharged home um, who are doing well. And uh, unfortunately, we have seen the, the opposite end as well. We have a few patients who did present and are very ill on ventilators. So um, it is a serious thing, but like I said, most patients can be managed at home carefully. We the just got to look for those alarm symptoms, if you will. Right. So the good news is a good amount of patients have been treated and released to back home. Yes. Great. Um, and do we, does TGMC have enough supplies to care for the patients that we're seeing? Yes, as of right now, see? we have uh, several weeks worth of PPE and supplies. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that should be fine. Again, this is why, quote unquote, flattening the curve is so important. And, for, and really what I mean is isolation. We got to really take care of each other as a community. And the best way to care for each other is to kind of stay away from each other for right now. Um, yeah. We're fortunate to live in a world with technology and, you know, FaceTime, call, Make sure everybody's okay. This is when we really got to all come back together. Right. Good thing for technology. Mm -hmm. So there's been a lot of talk about testing. Is there criteria for testing? And can you tell us what it is? Yes, there is. Um, so there, the CDC does have guidelines that, that priorita prioritizes uh, testing. Um, that is an almost ever-changing set of guidelines, mm -hmm. and it would really depend on on the testing available at that time. So I would say talk to your healthcare provider if you do have symptoms and 
see if you qualify. Is that why some people are getting tested at doctor's offices and they get results quicker than what they get at the hospital? And there's been a little bit of talk about that as well. Can you clarify some of that? Yes, so there, there are uh, two different routes to go. Um, TGMC is using the state test to perform all its testing. Mm -hmm. There are private labs that are performing the test. They're able to turn it around a little quicker. Um, I know that TGMC is working with those labs to kind of yes. help expedite the situation correct, correct. Mm -hmm. and we're currently providing a drive-through testing for healthcare workers and first responders yes uh, TGMC is working with other healthcare systems in the area to provide screening for highest risk patient uh, population which are healthcare workers who are caring for patients with symptoms and tell us what TGMC is doing to care for the patients if they are in the hospital so really the biggest thing is the isolation. So uh, as you can imagine, this requires a lot of care. Um, isolating patients is difficult and the amount of PPE, which is personal protective equipment to care for these patients is very high. Mm -hmm. And um, I know our communities had an outpouring of support for the hospital. And yes, um, so what can they do to help? I know they are anxious to help us. Just so as absolutely. Help so I would say the biggest thing is listen to your healthcare providers and follow those instructions of isolation. Stay home, protect yourself, protect your family. And um, I will say that would be the biggest thing that they can do to help. And one other thing, yes. we've been talking about virtual visits, and this has yes. spurred that on. Quickly tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Is. I know TGMC is, and a lot of other providers are employing the virtual visits, and I would highly recommend patients take advantage of that, particularly if it's routine visits that doesn't necessarily have to have a face-to-face -face visit. Um, it can be done over FaceTime or on the, on the phone, and still, make sure, still ensures that you're getting the care that you need without necessarily having to expose yourself to risks going out. Great. Okay, well, hopefully patients will take advantage of that and the so. comfort and safety of their own home, right? Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Manny. I know you've been very busy, and we thank you for everything that you're doing for our patients in our community at this time. Well, thank you, Rhonda. The best way to prevent and slow down the transmission of coronavirus is to be well informed about the virus and how it spreads. Protect yourself and others from infection by washing your hands or using an alcohol-based rub frequently and not touching your face. For more information, go to TGMC.com or follow us on social media at TGMC Health. TGMC is taking the lead and doing our part to keep our community safe and informed. Thanks again for watching To Your Health. I'm your host, Rhonda Alfred, and I'll see you right back here next week.